Hey folks, quick disclaimer about Greasy Says, my new show about being a game developer for 15 years who's brown. Okay, Greasy Says contains explicit language, adult situations, and viewer discretion is strongly advised. Right? Greasy Says is supposed to be a comedic take on what it's like to be in the gaming industry from my perspective, but I'm not out here trying to make people feel uncomfortable just for the sake of it. So, to sum it up, I have a potty mouth. Don't let your kids listen to this shit. And kings and queens above 18 only. Let's try that. All right. Lay is. Haha, <laughs> let's get this party started. Tied up with the professional. Crazy says. Is this recording? Yeah, it's recording. What's up, everybody? Uh, welcome back to uh, another episode of Greasy Says. I'm, I'm going to just, you know what? I'll be honest with you all right out the gate. This episode is going to suck balls. This episode is going to be terrible. There's gonna, probably going to be no music in it. It's probably just going to be me rambling for however long I feel I can ramble for. I might not even talk about games on this one. Who knows what I'll talk about? Well, I'll talk about shit that happened to me in the last few weeks or whatever um but yeah fair warning if you if you if you don't like shit that sucks just press stop and move on with your day because this one's gonna suck balls okay just warning you right now hold on i gotta go water this plant real quick i'll be right back he did say that this one would suck he was honest there was a ladybug there's a ladybug on on the plant that I was watering. Ladybugs are good luck. Maybe maybe uh, things are looking up. I got a ladybug. So I've been growing. I've been. This is how exciting my fucking life is. I, anybody out there, you could be five years old, and I guarantee you, you're cooler than I am right now. Yep. So I have these two little pots in my studio, uh -huh. and one has shade grass seed and the other one has full sun grass seed and because my life is so fucking exciting i decided to to, to plant a bunch of these seeds and just see what happens for fun that's what passes for fun in my life now growing watching grass grow that's it that's it pull the plug pull the plug oh my god um I'm sure everybody goes through this. I'm going to be real with y'all. Everybody goes through this. You ever get to a point where you just completely lack motivation to do anything? Oh, yeah. That's how I've been feeling recently. Like, last few days. I took a week off, right? I took a week off, no work, no nothing. Um, and I was determined to get a bunch of cool shit done. And I did get a few cool things done. Okay, so I took the week off. Um... Uh, the, the weekend before my week off, I'm getting amped up. I'm like, okay, I'm going to paint the studio because I wanted to paint my whole studio this new color. And I had started half of it like months ago. And it's just been kind of half done sitting there. And I've been like, I would love to finish this shit and get it done and feel accomplished and like do this project. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, okay, on my week off, I'm going to spend at least one day, maybe two days painting. <laughs> Best laid plans. The Saturday before the week that I had off, my kid gets me sick. Like, he comes down with something, and then, like, right on Saturday, as soon as my time off started, I was sick again, right? So all my plans are kind of dashed. I tried to, like, paint on one day, and, and that kind of worked out. And then I, like, tried to go to Muay Thai, you know, in that afternoon way, pushing myself way too hard as fucking always and i got even sicker and so for the whole week i've been half trying to get shit done trying to be motivated trying to be inspired and do cool stuff and then the other half of the week i'm fucking laying out taking naps during the day and shit just trying to stay ahead of this flu or cold or whatever the hell it was it was miserable it was miserable but I did get the painting done. So, A, round of applause for me. I actually got some shit done. 
Uh, why, why was I telling you that? I don't know. Who cares? Who cares? I told you all this, this fucking, this one is going to suck. Okay. It's basically going to be me just bit. I mean, it's going to be me bitching, but like, isn't every podcast about me bitching? Maybe it won't be as bad as I thought. Um, but I am cramming this last one in right before it goes out. Wow. That didn't sound, that didn't sound right at all. I'm trying to, I'm trying to finish this podcast the day before it's supposed to come out. Usually I try to finish it early and write music and do all that stuff. Not today. Today is just straight up by the seat of our pants. We're going through this thing. Uh, let me, let me think. I went to PAX. I went to PAX. PAX East just passed. Uh, and I went there. I didn't go into the convention at all. Like I didn't even see the floor. You know what I'm saying? I went by there, but I went there to like hang with some homies and to meet up with folks I hadn't seen in a while because of this freaking pandemic. No one's been in the office. So like I, I actually met up with people I used, used to, I still work with them, but I used to see them all the time and just hung out and shoot the shit. I met some cool people as you always do in PAX. Here's the thing about PAX. You could be that, like I used to be that guy who would want to be on the show floor, who would want to play all the games, stand in the lines, do all that shit, hunt down the games that I'm interested in. Usually 2D side scrolling, indie games, shit like that. I used to do that. I used to love doing that. I used to be that guy. I used to be the guy spreading around pink eye and shit in, at, at PAX. You know what I mean? Being a fucking, you know, germ uh, vector. You know what I'm saying? It's funny. My boy the other day called all babies germ vectors. And I, I couldn't disagree with him. A part of me was like, damn, bro. You calling my son a, a germ vector? And in the back of my head, I was like, he's right. He's right. Look at you now. Of course your son is a, a germ vector. That's what they do. That's what they do. COVID was nothing but like a toddler for the human race. It was like, it was just a toddler that came through with some, some cold from daycare and it just hit a bunch of old people and tried to take them out. That's what kids do. They try to take out old people. Respect on that. I mean, they're good at it. They're, they're very good. What the fuck was I talking? All right, PAX. So yeah, I used to like to go on the floor and, and mix up and shit and, and talk to devs and blah, blah, blah. But now I'm all about after PAX or like outside of PAX, like I meet more interesting, cooler people sitting at the bar and like people just rolling by and having conversations or sitting in the hotel, uh, in the hotel lobby or whatever and meeting people or just on the street. Like I was hanging out with some heads and then this dude pull up who knew the head I was hanging out with. And he had made this game that like I had heard about called um, Soundfall. Go check that shit out. He worked on this game. Uh, it's like a it's like a bullet hell shoot 'em up 2D style um has kind of an anime vibe well, maybe not anime kind of mix between anime and like western new animation like Steven Universe and them kind of things it's really that's the, really the hot look right now um but yeah I met this dude who who's like doing level design gameplay design etc right on the street on the side of the road smoking fucking weed and Boomy rolls up. He's like, yeah, I work on this thing. I'm like, oh, shit. Okay, we should connect. Bah, 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 bah. Uh, yeah, so I like that part about PAX. I I'll fuck with PAX on like a not at PAX level. So if you're at PAX and you want to hit me up and talk shit, hit me up and I'll meet you after. I'll buy you a beer or, or a fucking whiskey or something. And we could talk shit and talk shop. You know what I mean? And that'll be more fun for me and probably more fun for you. Uh, yeah, so anybody else go out there, go to PAX, reach out to me. Greasy says, uh, on all the social media. Um, and let me know what your PAX experience was like. Uh, I saw a couple things that I had not known about and I'm very excited about. Uh, a, a homie, uh, who actually reached out on the podcast before, got to play Road to, uh, what is the name of that shit again? I'm terrible with names, yo. It's Road to Tengu or Road to... Road to... Not Perdition. Get out of here, Google. 
Road to Yuma? No. 310 there. What? What is going on? Why are you... Oh my god, I'm the worst. Alright, we'll just Google a new samurai game. Not Ghost of Tsushima. Trek to Yomi. Uh, got to play it firsthand. It said the it felt really good to play. It. Controls are really good. Um, so I'm, I'm, I remain psyched for that one. And then I, I, last night I saw a video of like that people already probably know about this, but Shredder's Revenge, a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle arcade style game, 2D uh, sprites, impeccably animated, straight up an homage to Turtles in Time beautifully done can't wait to fucking play that i need to get more friends so i can i can cram three other you know people into a room and play that shit arcade style i can't wait don't ask me when i'll have time for it but i can't wait yeah so uh i went to pax that was cool um drove really fast home i hope i didn't freak out the dude i was giving a ride to um, I also it also made me feel really fucking old I'll be honest to be at PAX my god the energy it takes to cosplay I mean holy fucking shit you have to be motivated as fuck to, to cosplay because first you have to have the idea then you have to have the follow through to make the outfit with all of the, the, the mistakes and and challenges uh, that that it takes to that you have to go through to make a fucking costume that actually works then you probably make the costume try it on and the shit falls apart when you walk down the block so you gotta fucking refine your design and whatnot pick different materials or whatever and then you gotta actually go out there on the day you gotta on the day you know what i mean someday months later you gotta motivate to get up and actually go to the convention dressed like whoever the fuck sweating your fucking ass off. You know what I mean? I get it for some of the like super foxy females, you know what I mean? Who making up basically a living off of this shit and their IG account about to blow up as soon as they step up inside a pox and their sexy princess peach fucking outfit or whatever. But for like regular schmoes who making their your giant sword out of duct tape, what's the payoff? I don't know. I guess it's just for fun. And like your friends will see it and you have a good time. So I applaud that. But boy, it made me realize like I'm, I thought I was a nerd, but like I don't have the dedication. I don't have the, the follow through to be a hardcore nerd. I just don't. I thought I did, but I'm, I'm kind of like in the middle. You know what I mean? I'm like a casual, but I'm also like kind of a nerd because uh, I love games and shit, but you're probably not going to catch me cosplaying ever. You never will. I appreciate it. I'll look at him and applaud you, but damn, I respect the grind. I do. I really do. So I saw some interesting cosplay, of course, as you always do at PAX. I feel like PAX East usually has the best cosplay. Am I wrong? Reach out to me on social media. Tell me if I'm wrong. If, if you think what uh e3 had better cosplay i feel like they really come out at pax they really do yeah 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 oh i got to meet uh some musicians at pax i met this really cool dude I i'm gonna call his name out i don't usually call out names but i'm gonna call his name out because he was actually like a decent he seemed like a decent human being and like down to earth you know what I mean? Like when you go to PAX or when you go to any of these conventions, a lot of the time you hang out with people and everybody just gets into that mode of like selling themselves. So you're basically sitting around listening to pitches. People pitch their, themselves like for hours at a time. It gets exhausting personally because I don't do that. I don't care about pitching myself to every fucking Tom, Dick and Harry that I meet at a convention. I'm just trying to learn and like meet people and have fun. I'm not trying to fucking make a documentary about myself but this guy goes by the name uh game boy jones check out his music on youtube he has like mad videos on youtube and look at his go check out his music and shit nice down to earth genuine fucking dude you know what i mean like you know when you you meet somebody 
and you know they're not just full of fucking themselves and fluff and just always trying to fluff everything up. This dude was just like down to earth. Uh, and he's, he got talent. So I just wanted to shout him out here on the podcast to the five people that listen to this thing. Go check him out. Um, yeah, that was one of those interactions. There, you know, there's a lot of that stuff at PAX. It's just like the overselling of yourself. And then I get it. And, and I get why, you know, but sometimes it gets a little old. I guess since you, if I, it, I've been in this for a while, and I guess if you've been in this for a while, you kind of see what people are doing. And you know that this conversation isn't necessarily genuine. They're just, you know, seeing if you're worth their time. And to me, that just seems like a fucking douchey ass move. But this guy, Game Boy Jones, did not do that. Stand up dude. So props to him. Yeah. Uh, fuck. How, like, the, on a scale of one to 10, how much does this, this particular episode suck? Give me, give me, a, give me a number. Uh, it's probably like a four at this point. Yeah. Have I even been funny? Has anything funny happened? Have I made a joke? Have I made anybody laugh yet? Or are you just sitting there like, why? You're just looking at the numbers, click down on how much is remaining on this podcast. I apologize. I apologize. Um, maybe I'll name this episode, This One's Gonna Suck. Uh, it probably won't be the last time it happens either because... I am quickly realizing that juggling all these things and trying to make a quality podcast with all the music and all the shit I do in this podcast, it's a lot of work. It's high demand. Um, and sometimes I just don't have it in me. You know what I mean? Sometimes I just like run out of steam. And this week, my, my, between my kid, Pax, you know, painting this fucking studio, uh, taking care of family shit, I just... Uh, I mean, you're lucky you even hear me talk right now. I'll be honest. I thought about just being like, fuck it. Big deal. So what? There's no podcast this week. I don't care. But I was talking to a homie of mine the other day, and he asked me how the podcast was doing. I was like, yeah, it's okay. You know, I'm, st I'm, I'm just aiming for consistency. I want to put this thing out consistently. And that's my biggest goal. Uh, make people laugh and be consistent. And whatever happens, happens. Uh... So that, that's what motivated me to, to press record right now. Even though this one is going to suck. And I apologize. Oh, uh, did you all see Danny Elfman at fucking Coachella? The dude is, he is ripped. He's ripped. He's like 50 something years old. Very inspiring. I mean, he looked like something out of Johnny Depp's wet dreams or something. Like tatted up, jacked fucking 50 year old guy. I was very impressed. I read this GQ article that my homie sent me about his workout regimen. And, you know, as I'm getting a little bit older, you know, I, like, taking care of yourself is mad important. Like, and I like to be fit. Like, I like to be a fit dude. I, like, I, I ain't trying to be no flabby motherfucker. And no offense if you like that, but I ain't trying to be like you. You know what I mean? Uh, so I, I respect the hell out of this. And this dude was saying how, he, how much he hates doing cardio how much he hates being on the treadmill, he, how he, he doesn't eat bread, he don't eat no sugar, you know what I'm saying? He, don't, he, don't even, he, he doesn't even have a cheeseburger except on his birthday. You know what kind of discipline that takes? And he's a 50-year-old dude who, who, who he says in the article, he's still going to sleep at like 2.30 in the morning because he's writing music all night. Bruh. I can't remember the last time I stayed up that late writing music. It's been a while, especially since my kid came along. I be, get, I be catching them fucking Z's, bro. No, no doubt. Like, I might be in bed by like 10 and shit. You know what I mean? That's just how it goes for me. I don't know if Danny Elfman have kids. I think he does, but they're probably older. Yeah, but I, I respect his grind, man. I respect his grind that he's grinding on music that late into the day. And I respect his grind on taking care of his body, taking care of his health. And being fucking swole at, at 50 years old. More than 50 years old. That's just fucking crazy to me. That's goals for me right there. That's it. I want to be like that guy. I'm going to hop on the Peloton more and try to get my cardio up. I was even thinking about dropping bread. Not because I saw this article, but because I was, you know, various conversations. 
that happened in the last couple of weeks about diet, nutrition. And like, you know, you can't really, the way you digest bread as you get older is not the same. Like you don't break it down as quick as you did when you was young. Same thing with sugar. So you, you, you eat that candy bar and it's going to, you're going to pay for it three times over than someone who's like 20 something just because of your metabolism is shit. And your whole, your whole machine is just kind of, you know, been running for a long time. So it really, it's like an old car, you know what I mean? It don't really run as well as a new Tesla, you know? Speaking of Teslas. Wow, this is, now, now we're rolling. Y- y'all just getting a, a taste of my personal life. Am I going to talk about any games? I don't know. I'm not even playing anything right now. What am I playing? I was playing some Fortnite. I haven't played Ollie Ollie in a minute. I downloaded a bunch of shit. What I download? Let's see. Gris. Um, Disco Elysium. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for a nice big chunk of time to play that one. Um, what else did I download? Oh, I downloaded the new, the third um, Amnesia game, the horror game. Psyched to play that. Um, I don't know when I'll have time. Especially since the weather's getting nicer, I'm going to be outside a lot. I might have to wait until October to play that one. Uh, maybe I'll play that for, the, for Halloween. For my Halloween Jones in. Um, yeah, and I got a couple other things. I can't remember what they are right now. What the fuck was I talking about? Uh, oh, right. Speaking of Teslas. I also took my kid. Well, me and my wife took, took my kid to... Uh, an electric car meetup over the weekend. There's a bunch of motherfuckers who own electric cars who are enthusiastic about it, and they pull up in a local parking lot, and they, they open their cars up, and you could sit in them and talk to them about how these things work and blah, blah, blah. And my kid right now, he's getting bigger. He's growing up. Let me tell you his three favorite words. Mama, anytime, first thing in the morning, he wants to know, where's mama at, right? He sees me, he's like, where's mama at, motherfucker? And then as soon as he knows mama's either asleep or she downstairs, car. Where the fuck is a car? That's what he want to know. Where the keys? Let's go. I'm ready to roll right now, right? So I'm like, like my kid loves cars. He wants to open cars. He'll roll up to somebody's car. He don't even know. Try to open it and steal it. He always pulls up to our car. He knows exactly where he sits. So he goes to his side every time he sees it. He sees a truck or something. He's like, wow. So we took, we, this weekend, it was car, it was car weekend, right? Took him to this electric car meetup and we took him to a touch a truck thing where you, where they have like, you know, big ass fucking, uh, fire trucks and, uh, drunk tanks and move like moving trucks. They got, uh, Fucking uh, the, the, the tractors you could jump in. They got a horse, which is kind of a vehicle, right? A horse is a vehicle. So my kid, my kid was on cloud nine, honking horns, moving the steering wheel around. It was great. It was great to see him walk up into the parking lot and just be like, <gasps> car, just like mad loud and just start running. You know what I mean? It it made me happy. It made me realize I was doing the right thing. So I don't know, man. I, like maybe my kid's a racer. Maybe my kid is a fast and furious kid. I don't know. But I'm definitely thinking about what kind of car toys can I get this? Like, should I get him one of those, you know, those highly wasteful, terrible fucking toys that are like battery operated cars that you can actually drive? Like little kids could actually drive. I might break down and get him one. I don't know. Why not? What else am I doing? Nothing. Exactly. What, what else can I talk about? Nothing. I'm, I'm growing grass seed in my fucking studio. I could, that's going to be exciting for me to get him a fucking car and watch him roll down the street in it. You know what I mean? Simple pleasures. That's all I got, y'all. But yeah, the, so these, the, the electric cars, uh, Talked to a bunch of people at this thing. I got to check out a Rivian, which is like this new electric truck. It's like a pickup truck. Uh, crazy amounts of storage, which is usually an issue with electric cars. Um, beastly shit, man. 
costs like 65 70 grand so yeah i'll pass on that for now it's a little bit too much for a truck especially when you get a fucking f-150 i looked it up for like 30 something you know what i mean um but like it's great to see you know powerhouse electric vehicles coming along and as i was ta- and I, as i was talking to all these people I'm asking them, oh, do you have solar panels? Because I have solar panels. Some of them do, some of them don't. Some of them have batteries, some of them don't. And my thing is, if you have an electric car, before you have solar panels and before you have a battery, is there really a point to it? I guess you're still being environmentally conscious or whatever, and you're char- but you're still charging your car and paying for that power from the grid instead of offsetting that cost with solar panels or like a battery. So yeah, as I talked to these people with their fly ass rides and some of them didn't have batteries. Some, most of them had panels, right? Cause you're a believer, you're going to get panels, but they didn't have batteries. So I was, back in my head, I was like, that's weird. Like I wouldn't, I would want to charge with the shit I got stored from the, from, from the solar generation, not, pulling from the grid not trying to pay them motherfuckers more trying to take money away from them motherfuckers but that's just me so my my wife does this funny thing maybe i mentioned this before i don't know if i did but um she'll sing my son to sleep at night which is a beautiful thing it's cute real cute but what she sings to him and she didn't even know it until i told her is actually the Taps song, the Taps melody. Any of y'all out there know what Taps is? Hmm? You know that melody that goes dun 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 Yeah, it's called Taps. You know what Taps is about? You know what that song is about? That song is played for for at, at like soldier funerals when people have been fucking blown up or shot, or killed in some other nefarious way in war, that's the song they play at their funeral. It's like a military funeral song. <laughs> and for some reason, my wife sings that shit to my son every night. Dun, da, da, go to sleep. A bunch of soldiers died. I'm like, what is going on? I brought it up to her. I was like, yo, you know what you're singing? You know what you're singing? That, that's like a, that's a funeral song. And she, she started cracking up. She had no idea. She just, that's my, that's how my wife works, right? She's, she's so not a musician. She'll just hear a melody and that'll just go into like the, the, the bank and it'll come out later in some way, some other weird way. So she's out here singing a death march to my son for him to go to sleep. And he sleeps like a baby off of that shit like no worries like he's good to go it's really really weird uh (laughs) it's fucking strange (laughs) but he likes it fuck so cars and 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 funeral music maybe my kid's gonna be like goth and like a, a a speedster at the same time that'll be funny that'll be real funny So I was in this meeting at work the other day. Uh, uh, I'm actually working on a few things right now. But I was in this meeting with a bunch of coders. It was pretty much all coders, and I was just there to listen and take it in. And let me tell you, boy. Plumbers? Plumbers are a fickle bunch. Them motherfuckers. Whew. Plumbers got so much ego. You know what I'm saying? They don't even listen to other plumbers sometimes. Other plumbers that are working with them together to solve the thing, they won't even, they'll talk over a motherfucker. They'll like cut that motherfucker off just to get their point across. And I find like coders do this more than anybody. Because coders are always thinking four steps ahead. That's how they, they work. That's how they think. So while one of these motherfuckers was trying to explain his point 
the other motherfucker, you could see him shifting around in his seat on Zoom, like uncomfortable, because he was ready to just talk. He just wanted to talk. He was about to burst. He was about to pop. If he didn't get his fucking two cents in. And he would just jump in and interrupt everybody, man, to like, to get his point across. And the other plumbers, the other coders, were just like, you could tell how annoyed they were, which made me happy. I'm glad that other coders out there are pissing off other coders out there. I'm glad. I'm, it made me so happy to watch. I had to turn my camera off so I could laugh, so I could snicker in the corner. It was so funny to me to see a plumber get cut off by another plumber. And by the end of it, I don't think they really accomplished anything except frustrating each other, which also made me happy because fuck you. So I would say that sometimes plumbers are actually incredibly inefficient, right? I, just because you're a coder doesn't mean you always doing the most efficient thing, even though coders like to think that they maximize efficiency in everything they do. I would say that coder meetings are probably one of the most inefficient meetings that you could have because all it comes down to is a bunch of smart motherfuckers saying their point in sequence. Nobody's actually listening or collaborating. It takes a few meetings for that to happen. So coder meetings are incredibly inefficient. And emotionally draining. I wasn't even involved in the conversation and by the end of it, I was like, Jesus Christ, I need a drink. These motherfuckers are, are, are unbearable. It was wild. It was wild. Uh, seldom do you see a code or circle jerk where everybody's like patting each other on the back. It, I think it only happens at the start, very start of a project while everybody's in a good mood and everybody's excited to get on to the next thing. But I, I, never, I never see it much after that. No, no. If there's any coders out there listening, what do you do to get through those uh, coder meetings where you guys are debating about how something is built or whether the approach that someone's doing is the right thing? How do you have those conversations without murdering each other? And does it ever feel like you made any progress, any kind of forward momentum after one of these coder meetings? Or does it just feel like you're all just kind of sitting in the same spot? Spinning your wheels. I don't have the answers. I'm just curious. Well, um, yeah, I just realized that I had to stop it real quick because I just realized that it had looped around and I was recording over the shit I had already recorded. So, uh, yeah, this just to prove how much this podcast is going to suck this week. I'm even even the recording process is terrible. Um, but we have made it to the end of another episode of Greasy Says. I managed to ramble on for however long in one take. More or less. Yeah, in one take. This is one take, except for the fuck up that I did because I accidentally erased some of what I did. Um, Greasy people, I fucking apologize. <laughs> I really do. Um, you know, these things happen. Life happens. Uh, I'm going to give my, cut myself some slack. Um, and, you know, we've had a lot of great episodes already, so... You know, just just think about those uh, as you leave this episode sort of unfulfilled. Um, reach out to me on uh, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook under Greasy Says and tell me how much you enjoyed how shitty this episode was. And um, reach out to me on Twitter under the name MQ, that's M-C-U-E. And you can tell me in 150 characters or less how much you didn't like this episode. And go listen to my music on uh, SoundCloud, on Spotify, on Bandcamp under the name MQ. Um, drop a like, uh, buy an album, you know, um, support someone who puts out crappy podcast episodes every now and again. Um, thanks for coming out. Remember to like, subscribe, comment, give me feedback, tell me to go fuck myself. And until next time, it's me, 
greasy. And I'm checking out with the room key. Laters. Laters.